Hi there, welcome to this week's market analysis. Um, as usual, what we're going to do is to review quickly what has happened in terms of the news event for the last week. And uh, we'll take a look at the upcoming event for the week and we'll jump on to the charts after that to share with you from a technical analysis perspective. So over here, um, very quickly, you can see last week was relatively quiet in a way. Okay, we don't have a lot of very important data. Um, one of it is, of course, the RBNZ, which, um, you know, they raise rates, but it's nothing of a surprise because the market has already priced in. People have already expected that RBNZ is going to raise it to 3%, so nothing much over there. The dollar um, did strengthen quite significantly because of the strong core retail sales coming in. While the market actually anticipated a fall of 0.1%, the actual data came in very very high at 0.4, which again um, kind of contribute to the strength of the US dollar, which we'll take a look at the chart in a while to share with you my directional bias moving forward, right? But I strongly believe, um, you know, while people have priced in a negative sentiment on the dollar, this particular news over here actually kind of reverses that and uh, that kind of gave the catalyst, right, for the dollar to actually strengthen um, as of last week, uh, starting on Wednesday itself. Okay, um, other than that, nothing much as of last week. So if you take a look at this upcoming week, um, we have a couple of euro related data coming in at the start of the week. Um, all the way, you know, nothing much until we're going to have the US prelim GDP. Okay, this is going to be significant um, while the last reported one was in the negative territory, negative 0.8. Uh, the market is expecting a continuation of a drop of a 0. negative 0. 0.8. So this data coming out on, on Thursday over here is going to be crucial. If um, again, the sentiment over here, the data comes out is actually better than what the people have forecasted. We're gonna see a strength uh, continuing in the dollar itself. Okay, and on Friday we do have the call PC price index. Um, this is gonna be crucial as well because um, the Fed actually tracks this data very closely for inflation. So the previous one was 0.6. The market expect a 0.3 increment on that. So um, you know, depending on how data comes out, if it's gonna be higher than 0.3, which means that the inflation pressure is still there. However, if we're going to get less than 0.3, means that um, you know perhaps the Fed does not need to be overly aggressive in rate hike because we're starting to see inflation um, subdue a little bit, right? So those are the key important data that you want to keep an eye on for the week. Um, with that, let's take a look at the charts. So let's start off with the dollar index over here. Right. So as uh, I mentioned, right, the dollar actually strengthened quite significantly as of last week. Um, right now, from a technical perspective, we are definitely seeing a very impulsive push to the upside. And if I were to put in a trend line over here, it doesn't matter how I draw it. Um, you do realize that it has already broken this trend line structure as well. So moving forward into the week, um, if we're going to get a consolidation here, there's a good possibility we're going to see one more push to the upside to retest the previous high at 109.30. So for me, um, I'm going to hold on to a bullish bias for the dollar um, at least until 109.30. And of course, um, as we mentioned just now with some of the potential catalysts from the economic event there, um, that can give us the catalyst required to continue to the upside. Now, um, we don't trade the dollar index directly, but that gives you an overall directional bias for other major pairs. So for the euro dollar over here, uh, we did have a very nice push to the downside. Hey, um, for those of you who managed to capitalize on this trade together as well, um, do look for a continuation all the way to retest the previous bottom at 0.9950. Okay, um, we're kind of coming back to the parity level Looking at this impulsive momentum, there's a good chance we're going to see a continuation on the euro dollar to the downside, potentially even breaking this 0 0.9950 and going lower from there. Okay, so um, euro dollar directional bias is quite clear. Um, if you get any potential sell trade, I think that's a good one to look for. 
Now pound dollar um did came down very impulsive as well. Um, it's getting very very close to the previous low here around 1.1760. My suggestion over here is not to sell it anymore because um, you want to see how the market is going to react around that low. If you're going to get a crawl pattern here starting to develop, okay, um, perhaps you might need to give it a couple of days. If you see that pattern over here, uh, that's a good possibility we're going to see a bounce back. Okay, um, maybe first retest this level here, right, around the 1.20 trend D. So for pound dollar, um, while the momentum is to the downside, my personal suggestion is to be patient and see how the market's gonna develop. If we can get a crawl pattern over here, we're gonna look for a reversal trade to the upside. Okay, Aussie dollar, um, we are currently testing the previous low around that 0 0.6870. Pretty similar idea for um, the Aussie dollar compared to the pound here as well. If you're gonna get a crawl pattern developed for the next couple of days, uh, my suggestion is to be patient. If you see this, then of course, um, we can consider a short-term buy to the upside. However, if the market price um, as of last, next week, right, and the market opens, we get this push down and then a consolidation below that structure low, then uh, there's a good possibility we can look for sell trade retargeting the previous bottom at 0.6680 right so aussie dollar is pretty much at the cuff key level and we want to see how the market is going to react from here okay so that's on the aussie dollar dollar canadian um last week we kind of anticipated that we can see this move to the upside towards 1.2995 or 1.3 area um, we can't get that okay and uh, what i like to see from here if you give it another one or two days in the market forms again a crawl pattern okay we'll get a decent sell opportunity looking at it from a perspective of this as an abc um, as an expanding flat structure and that will also come in very nicely with the head and shoulder pattern for a sell trade to the downside okay um, but this is going to be counterintuitive because the dollar is showing strength. Okay? Um, and if you are looking to sell the dollar Canadian, we are essentially selling the dollar and buying the cat. Okay? For me, um, I'm going to look at this pair independently from the dollar. Okay? Um, give it, having said that, um, we of course need to see a valid setup before they take the sell. Okay? But we're definitely already at a key level, key zone. Okay, so give it maybe a one or two days time and see if we get a crawl. If we do, definitely a sell potential on the dollar Canadian. Now, in terms of dollar yen, um, rather similar to the dollar cat, we're kind of testing a key zone over here where we have the one, two, three, WXY. Um, and as long as the market is able to maintain below this low, sorry, below this high, uh, my overall directional bias is slightly bearish on the dollar yen. Of course, we want to see how the market is reacting from here, right? Um, ideal setup one is if this develop into a crawl, which you might need to give it maybe two to three days. If that happens, we're going to get a sell trade. Alternatively, if the market opens next week and we see a strong rejection followed by a tiny bit of a correction here, that's also a sell setup to the downside, right? Um, so dollar, dollar cat and dollar yen for me, um, I'm actually looking a little bit on counter reversal trade. So um, we need to of course see how the market opens and develop for the week. Now in terms of gold, um, nothing surprises us. Um, in, in gold chart over here, we have been calling that potential reversal. Now my overall long term bias on gold is still bullish. Okay, from a macro fundamental perspective sentiment perspective i'm still bullish on gold at least for the long term so right now um i'm actually monitoring this key level around 1744 to 1730 and see if i can get a potential buy because that is actually the 50 and 618 retracement level of the recent move to the upside um obviously now it's not a buy yet but if we can't get a little bit of a v-shaped rejection following a tiny bit of correction pattern over here that would give me a buy setup to take it to the upside 
Okay, so I'm gonna definitely keep an eye on gold for the week and see how it's gonna react from there. Now, last one over here, we have the S&P 500. A okay, very, very nice rejection um, and bounce to the upside since the low established um, mid-June. Okay. From an earlier wave perspective, this can be our wave 3. So you have this bottom here, wave 1, wave 2, you know, a very extended wave 3. And we're kind of expecting a wave 4 consolidation before the next move up. So for me, I think um, this consolidation or retracement right now is a little bit too small. Okay, and uh, from this perspective here, perhaps this coming week, we're just gonna continue to see some kind of bounce and consolidation for the entire week before the next move to the upside. So as long as the market is able to maintain above 4111, we're gonna hold on to this bullish bias and the whole idea over here is just to be patient give the market some time to complete this correction and our overall directional bias on S&P remains bullish as long as the price is able to maintain above 4111. So that's all for me in this week's video. I hope you enjoy and also able to benefit from it um, from a weekly perspective. And of course, for those of you who are trading, all the best to your trading for the week and a general reminder to always manage your risks. With that, I'll see you guys real soon again. This video is partly sponsored by Zen Phoenix, bringing you the weekly market analysis. And of course, if today you would like to take your trading to the next level, or if today you're very new to its Forex trading, then we do have a collaboration together with Zen Phoenix, where you can actually get the four trading pillars masterclass for free fully sponsored by Zen Phoenix. All you have to do is click on the link in the description and find out more how you can actually get access to this masterclass for free.